Okay, folks, let's uh, go ahead and start working and preparing our scene uh, to our final render. Uh, before actually going through anything, I'm going to actually change this texture. I'm going to uh, replace this texture with just a simple texture. Uh, not this one, actually. Let's come down here. Just this texture. Let's go ahead and do that. Or I'm not sure. Let's go ahead. I know it's a bit more lighting, but uh, I finally uh, I didn't like it the way it was those stripes wasn't that nice in the reflection and I think let's go ahead and see what we're gonna get I think this one is gonna be a bit nicer now what we're gonna be doing in this lesson is to uh, basically prepare the scene for a uh, final render we're gonna be doing a, a complete multi-pass rendering that's mean we're gonna be uh, taking all the passes and combine them back inside after effects and uh, this way we're gonna have a very very nice control over uh, everything okay uh, so let's go ahead and do that okay nice okay that's I think it's a bit uh, better for this project uh, let's go ahead and start the multi-pass rendering I'm going to my render setting and uh, uh, I'm going to add a few passes uh, I'm going to add the fuse I'm going to add reflection I'm going to add ambient occlusion I'm going to add global illumination uh, let's see what else do we need uh, we s uh, we're gonna be setting up depth of field so let's go ahead and actually add depth too and I think this uh, is gonna be enough also shadow so let's um, so diffuse reflection ambient occlusion global mission shadow I think these are gonna be enough perfect let's go ahead and uh, just uh, we disable the save so uh, make sure we have the multi-pass uh, rendering uh, as it should be. Let's go ahead and just render it and see uh, how it's gonna work out. Let's go to our output and uh, rendering the current frame. Let's go ahead and render it and see what you're gonna do. And I'm also going to uh, hide my lighting from my viewport. Okay, there we go. As you can see, uh, the render is finished. Let's go to our layer and enable the single layer. Here is our uh, reflection. Here is our ambient occlusion. Here is our global illumination, our shadows, and we got the diffuse. And finally, the depths. Uh, the camera has some depth data, which is great. We're going to be taking a look at that too. And if I get back to my image, and let's go ahead and enable the multi pass rendering. And you can see uh, when we enable the multi pass rendering, we basically, what uh, we're doing uh, is basically we're telling Cinema 4D that. Uh, please um, basically make the pixels based on the uh, layers that you have in your multi-pass uh, rendering data so we're not using this image here and we're just combining different passes the diffuse the shadow and if you take a look here for example the diffuse is it's blending mode is set to normal the shadow is multiply the global illumination is add the ambient occlusion is multiply and the reflection is add to i'm going to be doing the same thing inside after effects to basically combining them and we're getting uh hopefully we're going to be getting this exact same result okay so i can get back and take a look let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, depth of field that we have if i take a look at the camera you can see uh if you take a look here the camera is uh in order to have depth of field because uh, we have copied this camera from the original project so it has some data if you select the camera and go to your uh, uh, detail tab you can see we have the depth of field map rear blur turned on and if you take a look you can see the focus point of this camera is about here and if we go through you can see even though the camera is moving but uh, because we always have uh, something close to camera uh, and uh, this way the focus point will basically remain uh, here and we're going to be uh, all of the uh, close parts to camera are going to stay in focus all the time and as we uh, basically uh, get away from the camera they're going to be coming uh, more and more blurry so the that's it so zero for start and uh, which is uh, this value we haven't changed it and uh, seven six eight for our uh, end here you see that's where the depth of field basically finished and we have the uh, here at this point the depth of field uh, is at its most powerful uh, basically a uh, stage and uh, basically everything that is here is going to be completely blurred uh, unless we uh, tell otherwise uh, inside after effects based on the data that we calculate uh, from our depth of field map 
Okay, so that's uh, cool. Let's get back to maybe a bit more interesting. Um, let's see. Okay, maybe here isn't too bad. Let's go ahead and add some object buffer. Uh, so we have a bit more control over our render in After Effects. First of all, I'm going to add a, a one object buffer to the whole thing, even though we are going to be rendering alpha and it's not going to be that important. But let's go ahead and go ahead and add a Cinema 4D tag and add a compositing tag. Uh, sorry. Cinema 4D tag and add a compositing tag. Now let's go ahead and make, uh, enable the object buffer number one. Okay. And now let's go ahead and see what we want to do. Uh, this uh, cubes, this black cube, let's go ahead and maybe let's go ahead and select them. It's really you need to think about what you want inside After Effects and based on that you can go ahead and add different object buffers to create different, to create different mats. So I'm going to maybe uh, select this guys uh, and okay so let's go ahead I'm going to have this guys also selected this M and this G so there we go not this plus here and because they are kind of uh, uh, we're using uh, these cubes are parent to this uh, letter so basically when we select them we select their uh, children also uh, so there we go okay let's go ahead and right click cinema 4d tag add another compositing tag here and this could be for example object buffer 2 okay and we are going to enable object buffer 1 so they're going to be included in object buffer 1 otherwise they're going to be excluded and the object buffer 1 is going to be without them so let's go ahead and enable object buffer 1 2 and I'm going to add another object buffer to uh, this plus button here and also the plus button and I'm going to do the same thing for because uh, basically we have a 2M and 2 uh, plus uh, as you remember so let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and add another compositing tag and this is going to be object buffer 3 for example and let's see Let's go ahead and let me get my notes here and make sure we're applying the materials to the right. Uh, there we go. Here is the notes for this lesson. There we go. And material 16 and 11. So if I go to the cube number 16. Uh, we're going to, uh, even though we're really not going to be using object buffer that much, but I'm just going to add, uh, let's go ahead, material 16, material 11. Let's go ahead and add another compositing tag to these guys. And make sure object buffer 1 and object buffer 2. And the plus is going to be here, plus number 1. So let's go ahead and make sure it is also going to be in object buffer 3 and uh, there we go I think that's enough we can go ahead and add an ob object buffer for all the other cubes that we have but I don't think it's really that necessary uh, okay we can go ahead and combine some of those mats inside After Effects if we want but uh, you know uh, if we want to we can actually go ahead and simply do it so let's go ahead and select all of this cube right click cinema 4d tag and add a compositing tag here. This is going to be our object buffer 4, for example. So let's go ahead and enable 1 and 4 for them. And also this guy, Cinema 4D tag, compositing tag, and object buffer 4. And let's go ahead and control drag it to this one, to this one. And basically all the cubes that have no material in here and we have specified the materials for them up there. So let's go ahead and control drag it here. And this one too. Let's go ahead and render it again and see what we're going to get this time. So let's go ahead and render them one more time. 
Okay, folks, so the render is finished, and if I get back to my uh, layers, uh, oh, you know what we forgot? We actually forgot to our to go to our multipass and add the object buffer. So let's go ahead and object buffer one. Uh, let's go ahead and add object buffer two, three, and four. And let's go ahead. This is going to be one. This is going to be two. This is going to be three. And this is going to be four. Let's go ahead and render them again. Okay, folks, so the render is finished. And as you can see, we got different object buffers. We have the depth here. We got the object buffer number one. We got the object buffer number two. We got the object buffer number three. We got the object buffer number four. Okay, object buffer number one is supposed to actually include everything. So let's see what we've done it. Let's uh, take a look. For example, this cube wasn't visible in it. Let's just make sure. Oh, uh, you see we have forgot to kind of enable the object buffer here. Let's go ahead and make sure. Um, Go ahead and enable object buffer one for them. Just see these guys also don't have the appropriate object buffer. So let's go ahead and apply the object buffer one. And okay, just make sure this guy perfect. Let's go ahead and this one. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, render it again and see if uh, this time is gonna work. You just have to make sure your object buffers are actually working uh, fine. We might or might not use them. Uh, it really depends on the situation and what you want from your post-production. But uh, it's always good to have some sort of mats so you can create some cool stuff inside After Effects. But uh, let's wait for this. Okay, now the object buffer one is working fine. We got the object buffer two, object buffer three, object buffer four. We still have some problem. The object buffer two is supposed to be uh just the three guys but we have some extra yeah the object buffer two uh, if you remember we've actually added two because we have uh, basically two parts uh when uh we had the first uh cube set of cube and they uh, disappear and this uh final three cubes will appear so that's why we actually uh, see two version uh, of them and if i take a look let's see what cube is this cube it's cube number six and if you take a look it has one and uh four but let's see oh it has some compositing data on it that's why it's kind of caused the problem let's go ahead and delete these guys completely and also for this guy let's see what's gonna happen there we go so this guy have these compositing tags that we really don't need them let's go ahead and delete them and render it one more time and hopefully this time it's gonna work just fine okay folks so as you can see this time is working just fine we got object buffer one object buffer two object buffer three and object buffer uh, four perfect and now what we uh, really need to do is uh, what I want to do basically is to get some uh, 3d data into After Effects so let's go ahead and do that I'm just going to add a few simple lights really nothing too special Let's go ahead and let me go ahead and create, uh, go to my light. I'm going to add a light here and I'm going to basically hide this light or just uh, turn off its visibility completely. So you can go ahead and turn off its diffuse, specular or GI illumination. And it's just gonna be a dummy light that we're going to be using inside After Effects. So let's go ahead and move it maybe about here. Let's control drag and create a copy, create a copy. Maybe we can go ahead and create a copy. 
and this way we're going to have some nice uh, th uh, data let's go ahead and actually control drag these guys and let's do this I'm going to just there we go and let's just go ahead and select these guys and also and maybe let's go ahead and get them about to maybe about here and also let's go ahead and select these slides okay and let's go ahead and it's going to be our light uh, for export basically uh, so what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, select all of these guys and go to my uh, naming tools and I'm going to add this suffix to them for export so we can simply use them inside uh, After Effects there we go and now when we actually let's actually go and put them into a null so the scene will will stay organized and nice and neat and let's type lights for export perfect and we basically don't need this background so we can go ahead and delete this and there we go here is our scene nice and neat go ahead and hide them here for the moment get back to our camera as I said and I'm going to say it again we're not going to be rendering this and using this particular uh, project to uh, our final compositing I have uh, the renders uh, prepared from my main project I'm going to be using that render and that files in uh, After Effects and do the compositing uh, but let's go ahead and prepare our scene to final render I'm going to my outputs and uh, the whole frame range so all the frames was 0 to 600 okay let's go ahead and enable save and now here you can define which format you want uh, to use for your render I'm going to use uh, Photoshop PSD and the depth map I usually use is 16 bits per channel you can go to 32 bit if you want to but that's going to be enough I'm going to enable the alpha channel I'm going to also enable the straight alpha you define where you want to save your file here and give it a name and here you define where you want your uh, multi-pass images to be saved I'm going to disable this multi-layer file and I'm going to come down here and enable the compositing project file I'm going to hit save choose after effects and make sure you have include 3d data and you are good to go we can go ahead and enable our filter and change it from a cubic to be a gauss animation and this way we will get rid of uh, any possible flickering in our animation uh, so that's it and I can go to my global illumination maybe uh, we can go ahead and add our diffuse depths add some uh, more samples uh, which is up to you but I think for this project we really don't need to go crazy about our global illumination it will add uh, to the render time and it's really not going to be that visible so I'm going to stay with that and the ambient occlusion is uh, perfect the minimum sample are 20 the maximum samples are 200 and the accuracy is 50 percent we can go ahead and actually decrease this accuracy to uh, get a quicker render but uh, that's it and we are basically ready to render we can go ahead and start uh, the uh, rendering and uh, uh, after the render is finished you can come back but I'm going to be providing uh, the uh, raw render data that I have so you don't have to actually go ahead and render it and you can use those uh, data from uh, your project uh, file folder and you can go uh, there and use uh, those files uh, inside After Effects uh, so we are basically done with Cinema 4D and we're going to be uh, uh, basically working on our compositing in the next section inside After Effects. So see you inside After Effects in the next section.